Okay, first of all, I want to show you what happens when I try to extrude 3D text in Photoshop by just creating text uh, with the text layer. If I have this text created, and I have it right here, and it's still editable text and everything, it's just like a normal text object in Photoshop. If I go up to, if I select this layer, and I go up to 3D, you can do this command right here, new 3D extrusion from selected layer. Now if I click that, I get a 3D extrusion of the text. As you can see, if I bring this extrusion depth down, just to be really small, you can see what's going on here. The paths that create the text are intersecting with each other and then deleting themselves as they intersect. And that's, you know, that's not what you want. And there's not really any way that I found it to fix it. And so what I ended up doing was I went to Illustrator and I just created, you know, text in Illustrator like I would normally do. This is just editable text. But then what I did was when I hit, when I go up here to type and do create outlines or shift command O, I get all the, all the text is paths. And you can see now why Photoshop is doing that. These are overlapping paths inside the font itself. And this is what it's, these are the little spots that are having the holes in the text. So what I did after that, and this I think this is a good, I think just best practice for bringing text in in general, is I had all these paths selected and I went to the Pathfinder and I just hit Union or Unite. What that does is it just unites all the overlapping paths to be one path. So now there, this every every letter in here is its own path, and anything that's overlapping has just been united together to create one path. So that's really what you want to create uh, text. So then what I can do is, you know, I have I have it right here. I'm just gonna delete this one. So this was the same thing. I just these are all outlines paths of the text, and you can just save that as an Illustrator file like you normally would and you can bring that into Photoshop. Now I'm going to just get rid of this layer and I'm going to place embedded. I'm going to place that text into this Photoshop file right here. Hit OK. So now it's uh, text from Illustrator inside Photoshop. If I hit OK, now it's been brought in. This icon right here in the layer means it's a smart object, which means that it can be edited inside Illustrator and then this update in here and everything. But what I want to do is I'm going to keep it as a smart object actually when I go to extrude so it stays as a vector file inside Photoshop. It won't be rasterized. So now this is brought in. I have the layer selected and I'll go to 3D and then new 3D extrusion from selected layer and now it works. So I'll bring the extrusion depth down to be very little and there we go. This text is brought in, I'm going to bring it just a little bit more, maybe like 0.5 inches just to give it something. Okay, there it is. That's great. And now we have this layer ready to go. So what we can do is really just have this one layer that's just the uh, the main ad copy. And what I'm going to do from there is export 3D layer from the 3D menu. Now the thing is you can't have more than one layer selected to do export 3D layer. So you can only export one 3D layer at a time. So it works, it makes more sense to do any kind of text that you want to have extruded to make it its own 3D file that you can then bring into Adobe Arrow. So once we do that, I'm going to, yeah, select the layer, 3D, export 3D layer. Ask you what kind of file format you want. And Adobe Dimension, out of all these uh, formats, Wavefront OBJ is the one to really export to. That's great. Hit OK. 
And here are here's a way you can set your export. I'm just going to call it that as I've already saved it. Hit save. Replace yes. Exported. Okay, that's great. I'm going to delete this layer and then bring in the other ad copy that I have, which is the uh, call to action. Print your pictures at, and then we're going to also import the Walgreens logo as an image, just to show you that process. So you have that set up, brought in. It's still a smart object. 3D, new 3D extrusion. I'm going to bring this one down too. I guess I think to 0.5 was pretty good. And there we go. 3D, export 3D layer. File format, OBJ. This is now a separate audio, this is now a separate 3D file. So I'm gonna call this the add copy, call the action. There we go. Exported. So now the next step is to bring this and the other text into Adobe Dimension to prep it for Adobe Arrow. Because you can't really bring in OBJ files, plus there's some other options you can do inside Dimension to put colors on the text. So this is a good place to uh, prep files for Adobe Arrow because it does the compressing for you. So I'm going to close this file. It's already been sent. The thing to do actually is to create a new dimension file like this instead of opening a file. Open a new dimension file, but then go to File, Import, 3D Model. That's where we can import OBJ files like this. I named that file so I knew what they were going to look like. And we're just going to bring in the add copy first. Now this happens typically too, where I'm at the origin of the scene, but the file itself is now off somewhere else. And if I rotate, I can try and find it. There it is right there. But the easiest thing to do is just really click on this icon and it'll take you to where that file is located. And just to be safe, I want to set this object, or this 3D object, at the origin. And you can do that right here in the position coordinates on the properties. And you can see right here, in the Z direction, it's set off a lot. So if you just hit zero in the Z direction, it gets sent back to the origin. Now what's great about the way that this was prepped in Photoshop, um, if I go into right here, I double click on this, I can go into the different materials that have been applied to this extruded text. Now you've got the inflation material, the bevel material, the extrusion material, and then the back bevel and inflation materials. Now I kind of like the idea of having the face, the front right here, be white. So I'm going to set that to white. Same with this. But I think it would be kind of cool to have the extrusion material, which is the material right here, the depth of the text. Set that to red like a Walgreens red. And I'll set the back of these to be white as well, even though you're not going to see it. Okay, so now the text has been, the colors have been set up for this text, and now it's ready to be sent to Adobe Arrow. And the way to do that again is to just have that layer selected, file, export, Selected for arrow. You get that message again. Hit export. This is going to be in the Creative Cloud file, so I'll go to Walgreens Ad. And I'm just going to say Mother's Day text. Save. Exported. That's great. And now I can hide this layer and then I'll just bring the other text in. So import 3D model. Go back to this call to action dash OBJ. 
open. It's over there. I'm just going to go to the properties right here in the position and just hit the Z position to be zero. There it is. And inside here, you can click this arrow to go to the materials. I'll do the same thing I did before. I think actually I'm going to flip it. I'll make the face red. But then everything else white. There we go. Now all these materials were created from inside Photoshop. That's why I like that process of extruding uh, vector smart objects from Photoshop and bring them into here to dress them up for Arrow because you have the control over the different materials because Photoshop and Adobe Dimension talk to each other really well. So I can bring these in and have it all prepped and ready to go and then just change the colors as much as I want. Now that file is ready. I'm just going to make sure that the layer is selected right here. Export. Selected for arrow. Put it in here. And there we go. Now in the next section, I'll show you how to prep uh, image files for Adobe Arrow.